Hey, what's going on everyone? Edwin Pagan here. And on this tutorial, we're going to be talking about digital forensics investigations, uh, more particularly photo forensics, and show you how quickly it is to kind of solve a crime with simply one digital picture. So stick around. It's going to be a great episode. Data and information provided on edwinpagan.com and YouTube are for informational purposes only. Anytime the word hacking is used on this video, it shall be regarded to as ethical hacking. Use these skills to pay the bills ethically, folks. Enjoy. Also, views and opinions expressed by Edwin are Edwin and Edwin's only, all right? Not of the sponsors, employers, baby mama, anybody he went to school with, anybody he owe money to. With that being said, enjoy. All right, what's going on, everyone? So uh, this is going to be a very interesting episode. Uh, I wanted to do something very different, something a little more uh, applicational use. Uh, I'm trying to be more and more. I keep getting taken down by YouTube. I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of the videos I'm putting up, they're saying, hey, this, is, this seems very unethical. This seems very uh, shady hacking type stuff. So uh, we're trying to do more of a professional uh, but friendly more charismatic and uh, that's why I'm wearing the Christmas sweater you know it's also cold as hell in Florida but uh, with that being said you know that the conversation comes up a lot about you know the techniques that the police have and, and that forensics experts have to kind of catch crimes you know in, in our head and we watch CSI and stuff like that we we think that they man they, they must have some crazy technology that they use to catch criminals and the reality is is that there's a lot of very simple techniques that forensics experts can use uh, to kind of just solve a crime very quickly now with that being said uh, for applicational use we're gonna be using a picture of me and we're gonna show you that picture in a second um, and we're gonna give you a scenario in which a crime, uh, a murder, a shooting was committed in a certain area and kind of show you how a simple picture can be used to kind of like, you know, to, to pinpoint or to find out what exactly happened and kind of use that information. So with that being said, um, you know, I had recently or a couple years ago, I took a digital forensics uh, investigations course. So shout out to the folks at IT Pro TV. Um, and what I found very interesting about the digital forensics or the investigational process of anything is that in most cases, there's never a smoking gun right in, in any investigation there's never a smoking gun um, and what I mean by that is not there's never like a single piece of evidence that the police rely on or investigators rely on in order to solve a crime it's typically taking a bunch of little bits and pieces and clues and information that you find and then using that information to kind of build a case on someone, right? To kind of say, hey, all right, well, th with this information together, we can kind of piece together and paint a picture for the jury of exactly what's going on, what exactly happened. Uh, and, and that really does work out, especially with, with digital forensics. So uh, we go on our computer right here and we got a picture of me, all right? Now, I need, pe I need everyone to... To really, to really understand that, hey, all right, I, I'm the victim here, all right, I'm the victim. <laughs> all right, so that being said, here we are. We have a picture, an old school picture of Boppy here. Okay, this is Edwin Pagan right here. I was, uh, I was, I was like, I think I, I must have been like 22 years old, all baby faced, full of sodium. Um, but that being said, this is a picture of me with a gun, right? Um, now, I, I don't I don't like guns. I'm not really big on the whole gun thing. Just, you know, it's just not my thing. But that being said, I listen to a lot of rap music. So, of course, I got to hold it like a thug, you know what I mean? Um, but with that being said, if, you know, if you look at this picture at face value, you think, well, all right, well, there's this guy. Uh, definitely needs to get on that proactive. Uh, he's got a, a gun. Now, a, a, a firearms expert could look at this gun and be like, all right, well, that's definitely a, uh, you know, a uh, 45 caliber. It could be XD. There's a lot of information that a forensics, uh, a, a, a firearms forensic person could actually pull from that single picture. What a lot of us don't realize is that a picture is worth a thousand words. Yes. But it's also worth a thousand lines of code, especially when you're talking about digital pictures, right? Because what we don't realize is that when you take a digital picture, you're not just getting an image when you capture that image, uh, when you capture the picture. It's not just an image it's capturing. There's information that's associated to that picture that's inside that picture. It's embedded. It's what we like to call metadata, right? And that metadata is very, very interesting, right? Because you don't realize you're putting that data into the picture, but it's there. And that information can be extracted with the right tools, right? So, for example, if we were to take this picture and then upload it to a what we... Uh, a, a metadata viewer, which is uh, basically, you know, this application exists online. There's plenty of websites out there that can extract the metadata from a picture. But there's b basically what we call XFDA, EXIF data in that picture, right? JPEG pictures, etc. Now, with that being said, if we take this picture and we drop it into this uh, metadata viewer, so we go here, put the original picture in there, and it's going to ask us if we a robot. And let's say, nope. View image data. All right, bet. 
So now we're actually looking at the forensics data of this picture, right? The metadata, right? So now we can see a little more information on this picture that wasn't initially available when we looked at the picture, right? So now we can see, all right, well, this was taken on an iPhone 4, tells us the lens information, tells us that the flash was on. It gives us a date of when the picture was actually taken, all right? Now, this isn't forensically sound, but it gives us a guesstimate of when the picture was taken. Now, with that being said, if the picture was taken on a cell phone, cell phones are connected to cell phone towers. So the time on that cell phone is, is in synchronous or is synchronized with the cell phone tower. So it's a very accurate time, right? So we're going to get the accurate time of when that picture was taken. So we say November 11th, 2012, right? I was 22 years old, all right? <laughs> uh, but we're also getting some more interesting information, right? We're getting the location information as well, the longitude and latitude information of where that picture was taken. So think about that. Now we know the, lo the, the longitude and latitude of when this picture was taken, right? So if we take this information, hit copy, and we put that into Google Maps, we are now going to be able to pinpoint exactly where that picture was taken. So you can see here, it was taken in Florida, you know, and uh, let's see if we can get like a satellite view of where the picture was taken. And you could see it's taken in the back of, you know, some wooded areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we can now pinpoint exactly uh, where that picture was taken. And on top of that, right, we can say, all right, well, this picture was taken from an iPhone 4. So with that being said, there's, you know, there's additional information on here, right? You know, you could just get you know, a bunch of information. There's a lot of uh, what we like to call unique identifying information, all right? Unique identifying information means it's information or data that's unique to your specific device, right? Unique. It's like it's like the VIN number for your phone. Oh, I'm sorry, the VIN number for your car or the license plate. It's unique to you. Not Nobody else on the street has the same license as you, right? It's unique to you. So with that being said, you take all that information that you just gathered from a single picture, right? And you throw it into a scenario where... For example, right, let's say there was a murder or shooting committed at this general location, right? So with that being said, let's say a, a murder or shooting was committed at that location. And at that location, they find a 45 millimeter shell casing, right? So if the gun that the firearms expert believes is a 45 caliber firearm, well, now we know that Edwin Pagan, who was in this general vicinity, right, owns that firearm, right? He's had that firearms on or before that shooting happened, right? So we know that if we subpoena cell phone records for Edwin Pagan and we find that, hey, that Apple iPhone 4 was registered in that general vicinity, right, of where that shooting happened, now we have multiple points of evidence or data points to say, hey, not only does he own this gun, but he took a picture with this gun. He was in that area. His cell phone was in that area during that shooting. You have all this information that they're able to gather from a single piece of information or single piece of evidence, which is the picture. And that's how quickly forensics experts can just gather information on someone with a simple picture. Now, this isn't just you know, uh, useful for forensics cases. This has also been used in scenarios where people you know, unfortunately are trying to rob someone, right? So let's say, for example, you're on Craigslist and the guy says, hey, you know, let's say, for example, you're on Craigslist and you're selling a very, very expensive item, right? You're selling, you know, a $20,000, $30,000 uh, ring, right? And of course, you're not going to bring that person to your house, right? It's stupid, right? But if that person were to ask you for a picture and let's say you send them a picture and then, and then they extract that information from that picture, i.e. the longitude, latitude, the GPS information, then they can use that information to find out exactly where you live, right? They can find out what type of phone you have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's a whole bunch of things you could do that we're not going to go into detail about that someone who had ill intentions could use this information uh, to kind of attack you or whatever, whatever, whatever. So with that being said, all right, iPhone, for example, has the ability to turn that metadata information off. Uh, applications such as Facebook and Instagram, when you upload the picture, for the most part, it does extract and remove that metadata from the picture, all right? So that, that doesn't apply to things like Instagram. But with that being said, if, you know, police were able to get a copy of the original picture, et cetera, listen, the list goes on and on of things that could happen. But my point in all this is saying is that 
it's not that easy or it's not that hard uh, to solve crimes these days because of the amount of, of information that we do put out there that we don't even realize. And it's, it's a good thing because we are able to solve crimes, but also it's a bad thing. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments and stuff below. I'm try to answer them. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. Uh, and with that being said, till next time, take care. Peace, everyone. Subscribe this channel more videos of dark side. Also, views and opinions expressed by Edwin are Edwin and Edwin's only, all right? Not of the sponsors, employers, baby mama, anybody he went to school with, anybody he owe money to. With that being said, enjoy the video.